I hope you're having a fantastic day today. This is Dave K here today, excited for a unique day. Today I'm heading off to Pearl Harbor. I've been meaning to check out more of the more distant locations here in Hawaii, and I think I've figured out how I can go some distant locations. Today I'm planning to take the bus, it's just called the bus, here in Hawaii, up to Pearl Harbor. It should be about an hour-long bus ride. There's a couple of different buses I can take to get there, and they come pretty regularly. I think I'll buy a bus day pass, and if we can get enough done at Pearl Harbor fast enough, I might even keep going past Pearl Harbor all the way up to the North Shore. We'll see how much we can get done today, but either way, I'm so excited to check out more of Hawaii with you. I'm also looking forward to getting some delicious food, as per usual, and seeing so many more sights. Let's do it. The first step of this process here this morning is to walk to the bus stop. It seems like my timing isn't perfect, and that it might be another 15 minutes till a bus arrives. That being said, I still need to make my way to the stop. It's another block or so up this way. I also have my coffee in hand to keep us a little bit warm. I am still quite chilly out here, personally. I feel like it's kind of cold, but we're making it through. So maybe next time we'll wear the jeans or the sweatshirt, but I feel like I'm gonna be in the sun all day. So I figured shorts were probably good today. We'll see. Right behind this Marriott now, only a couple blocks from my hotel, you can see this appears to be the bus stop. That's what Google Maps is telling me. I think is that this is the bus stop. It's not marked too, too well, but it's a little kiosk hut thing. So I guess that's enough of a clue to tell us it's a bus stop. Uh, yeah, at least we found it, I guess. We'll, we'll, we'll see, hopefully the bus arrives here. Here's another good sign I hadn't noticed that the bus is gonna be right here. There's a bus sign, tells us some routes. Tells us not to park here and otherwise. Cool, okay, so I feel better and better about it. And the sun is starting to come up slowly, little by little. I believe that bus over there is technically our bus, just heading in the wrong direction. So shortly, we should be on our bus, I think maybe another eight minutes or so. But that's an idea of what it looks like. We'll see it stop, hopefully, and we'll be able to jump on. All right. I'm also seeing this sign that looks like no camera footage, maybe, perhaps on the bus. So I might not be videoing on there, just an FYI. But we'll see you on the other side. So this was unexpected. It looks like maybe a bus got nixed here. Now we're waiting another 14 minutes. Uh, you know, it would have been awesome to know earlier. Probably would have run back to grab a sweatshirt or something. At this point, I, mean, I think I just wait, but man, I'm gonna be late to my destination, but it happens. And there it goes. Just stepped off our bus here at the Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor. Beautiful, glad we were able to take the bus trip here. It was a pretty standard bus maybe like a metro bus, wherever you're from. Not the ideal vacation recreation vehicle, but not bad by any means. And I've got the day pass to enjoy it today. All kind of exhibits to see here today. We have a pass for the Arizona Memorial, which I'm excited to share with you. I booked an online ticket for 9 a.m. It was a $1 reservation fee. Otherwise, it's a free thing to see, which is awesome. I wanted to spend that dollar to make sure I had the ticket instead of missing it. But there's so much to see here. Maybe we'll do others like the Missouri or the Bowfin. But first we have to find our way inside. Where do we drop our bags and do all that other good stuff? Let's figure that out. Is it this way or is it this way? I am pretty sure we are going this way. All right, let's do it. The sun is starting to come up and Pearl Harbor has a beautiful curb appeal. I love these palm trees in the distance and I'm looking forward to seeing the exhibits inside. I believe I walk through that way, but we can see the mountains and other homes in the distance most definitely embodies that Hawaii feel here at Pearl Harbor. The first thing to note here at Pearl Harbor is there's no bags permitted inside. So there's bag storage available at the Bowfin. So I'm gonna have to go maybe to the Bowfin to drop my backpack in that bag locker. I believe it's like $5 or so. And so let's do that first and then check out the Arizona. So here is that signage for the Arizona, the Oklahoma and the Utah. Another one I didn't realize was here. Pearl Harbor National Memorial with these beautiful palm trees and the flags here. Not flying because not a lot of wind, but they are flying in the way that they're at the top of the poles here, at the top of the flag poles. In front of us, you have another Pearl Harbor Historic Sites sign. This one telling us of some other sites we can see. Battleship Missouri, United States Navy, National Park Service. Nice. So we have to figure out where the Bowfin bag storage is and then we can go check out the Arizona and then watch our video and such before we ride the Arizona. So behind me is the check-in for the Arizona. Here I'm heading to the bag drop. I gotta drop my backpack here, make sure I have everything I need. Maybe I'll take out my water bottle and then we'll make our way onto the Arizona. Excited to share it all with you. 
Let's do this. Okay, the bag has been dropped. I grabbed my jacket, my water bottle, and a few other things. Now we're making our way inside. Let's do it. All right, I have arrived, and I asked the helper up front. He advised that there are museums that way, the real theater. I have to be at 10 minutes before my time, and then there's a movie playing back this way I'm supposed to see before I ride the tour, or I read online I was supposed to see it beforehand. So let's go check that out first, and then we'll head the other way. As we're walking by, here's a look out at the water. Maybe you can see an iconic image from the Arizona that way. I believe I'll be on that white structure in the water at some point. And who knows if I should check out the bowfin or otherwise. The outdoor movie, I think, is playing right here. So let's head over that way and take a look, see what that looks like. And he also mentioned there were quite a few things to see on the grounds. This is the Lone Sailor. The base of this statue contains steel from the USS Arizona. Nice to see that here. You can see these statues recovered from the USS Arizona. Wow, is this a real anchor? I would imagine it must be. Remember, understand, and honor. December 7th, 1941. Wow. I didn't realize that it was that recent, quite honestly. I would have imagined it was a little bit longer ago. It's nice to be able to see this here and be able to remember and honor. Continuing down in this direction is the Bofin, and that movie should be playing on that TV right there. It's a different setup, I'm sure, than they would normally have during regular health seasons, but it works. At least we'll be able to see the film. We'll see how it goes. I should probably go back and take some pictures too. Uh, those things I just passed, so I'll do that later. Honoring some of those Marines that survived the attack and other information from Pearl Harbor here. And over here, we'll watch that film. The Memorial Theater is that way to catch our vessel later. But for now, we're heading this way to watch the film. This is that film that we are supposed to watch before getting on the Arizona. See how it goes. Maybe I'll take a chair in the middle since it's just me in this viewing area. And I have a view of the bowfin on my right. Wow. Rolled over too quickly, some 170 planes. It was a beautiful documentary in remembrance of those who died in Pearl Harbor. And as you're probably aware, it's not generally my aesthetic, my vibe, to go for the sad remembrance, but I think it's important to keep them in mind and to be able to remember and understand what happened December 7th, 1941. Only about 30 minutes until my tour now. So we're gonna take a look around and you can see the submarine, you can see the open water, the Arizona way out there, that white area we'll be walking onto later. And it looks like that might be the Missouri way back there, the battleship. But we'll see how things go here. I'm looking forward to being able to take a look around, sharing it with you. We may wait to do the museum afterwards. I think that might make the most sense because we don't have a whole lot of time now and I don't want to be late for my departure. I want to be at least 10 minutes early, but maybe we'll take a quick look at the museum TBD and take some photos in remembrance here. There's also the Pearl Harbor shop here to be able to get some merchandise to remember Pearl Harbor, remember the event, and be able to remember your visit to Pearl Harbor as well. Nice to see this merchandise available here. Maybe I should consider getting something. Generally, I'm not often thinking of merch shopping, but it's nice to see around the shop what they have available. And some of these shirts are really attractive as well. Also interesting to note, a lot of these vessels were named after states at the time, it seems, Nevada, Utah, West Virginia, Maryland, that Arizona. Who knows, I may come back for a hat after I tour the Arizona, but again, nice to be able to take a look around and see what merchandise is available. In addition to taking the Arizona Memorial Tour, there's also a narrated tour and a deluxe tour. The narrated tour about $7 and the deluxe, I think $12.50 or so. But I'd like to experience it as is the first time, just maybe come back, just to see what it's like the first time around. And I'm also thinking, we'll see, in terms of whether or not I want to see more of Pearl Harbor, maybe the Bowfin or otherwise, while we're here. I most definitely want to check out those museums. I was recommended to look at those, but only about 15 minutes now until our tour of the Arizona. So I'm gonna make my way to that theater now to make sure that we're on the vessel in time. Just a quick look though, as we're walking by these museums, it seems like these are the two museum entrances. That one, and perhaps this is a larger one over here with more of that history from Pearl Harbor. The crossroads of the Pacific sign up here and our destination for the Memorial Theater should be on our right. Let's step inside and take a look at the Arizona, share it with you.
in the waiting area now showed them my reservation and we are counted and in just waiting to step on board the Arizona or I guess above the Arizona on that white dock. Stepping inside the memorial now. They're not showing the movie in here, but over there as we saw earlier. And we're gonna make our way straight out to the Arizona. This is what that theater would normally look like. Much larger scale than the one we saw. Cutting through here to make our way out to the ship now. We're gonna board this vessel, which will take us out to the Arizona. making our way to the Arizona now. Let's check it out. Stepping off the vessel now, they informed us we'll get our exterior photos once we're on the way back out. But you can see this ramp we walk up. Just got off this boat here on our right making our way inside looking forward to seeing this i've never seen it before and i look forward to sharing it with you we've made a brief stop in pearl harbor in the past on our last visit but only quick merchandise shopping so looking forward to being able to remember and honor better today here we go stepping inside a lot of people standing up here on this viewport i'm not sure how this works It's still a bit crowded with the 8.30 crew transitioning from our 9 o'clock crew, so let me show you some of these other parts first. Here's a wall showing us the memory of the gallon men entombed on the Arizona. Quite a few names on that list. It's nice that they've created this memorial for all of them and to remember this event. Beneath us, some of the limited remains of the USS Arizona. You can see it most definitely looks like a part of nature now with the fish swimming around it being able to see all the moss that's grown on it. I'm not sure how much of this structure is connected to the Arizona or part of the Arizona that's restored that we are walking in right now, but that's pretty clearly a piece of it beneath us. You can read more information about what's going on beneath us here on this board. The shrine room we just saw displays the names of 1,177 Arizona crewmen lost in the attack. Out there, another piece of the Arizona pretty clearly visible above water. Most of it below water submerged, but this one piece visible from atop the vessel looking out at the island. Really sad event, but it's nice that they've set this up again to be able to commemorate those that were lost in the event. Really interesting to look out here. It's hard to show you all of the ship beneath us because it's so hard to see through the water, but there are a few pieces sticking out. We're hearing different information about the ship, how high up the bombers had to be, and who some of those bombers were in the event. Really interesting to hear all this information and learn more about it here on the Arizona Memorial. A few more plaques by the front of the memorial, giving you more information on the plaques about the USS Arizona, understanding what each aspect of the Arizona is about, when it was built, and other information. It would make sense that the Arizona Memorial is this small because Practically none of the ship remains, except what you can see beneath us, what we've already shown you. I want to look at this tablet right here in the middle and give you more information off that later when it's a little less crowded. They had to heat it up before they put it in the, the turbines to thin it out. Really useful information we're learning about the Arizona there near that map I showed you of the ship. Give us a lot of understanding of exactly what is part of the ship. They're not allowed to touch the ship with this memorial which is what I was asking. It seems like this is about as close as it gets, which is extremely close, but not allowed to touch the ship. That was part of the US Navy's requirements. Not a lot of the ship, again, visible, but apparently there are still some oil tanks that may be undamaged on the ship below, but really, really interesting to get a better understanding of, of what went on here, what led up to it, the history of the event, and how Pearl Harbor has changed since that date. One thing I thought sounded interesting was the buoy and the stern were potentially visible. I think it's actually down in this direction. So the mooring quays seem to be those right there. That's where the ship would be attached. And I believe that buoy may be the stern or the bow of the ship. I think that's what those buoys are marking. 
most definitely not as high up as some of these other parts of the vessel. I believe this may have been a gun turret. That's what it looked like, I think, on the map, but really interesting to see this. I'm glad we have a chance to. Here's the other side. Again, this side of the Arizona. It looks like there's a buoy out that way, which may also be the stern or the bow. And you can see some more of the ship under the water on this side. Again, getting a clearer picture as I hear more and as I learn more about the vessel. Again, not a lot of sights involved here. Just an understanding of exactly what it looked like before. There used to be ships, it sounds like, all across this harbor. You'd find them docked throughout the water, but most definitely a lot less of that now. As I walk around, I notice more and more of the vessel. I want to be able to share it all with you. Here's this section, perhaps only visible from this back left corner by that memorial shrine. A few more pieces of the vessel sticking out of the water. I'm not quite sure if I'd noticed this one before. I don't believe I had, but nice to be able to really take the time to see and embrace and appreciate. This is very interesting. I hadn't noticed in the shrine room. It's Arizona survivors interred with their shipmates. You can see many of them in the 2010s. Really interesting to understand what they've done here from that lens. It seems like this is also a section about the survivors interred with their shipmates. These date much further back from 1982 up to those 2010s. Another detail I'm noticing, these were all Navy. If you look at this giant wall, you've got everything from the battleship division commander, the rear admiral, to the commanding officer, captain here. This small subsection is the Marine Corps that seemed like was also on the vessel. Much smaller list of Marines, much larger list of Navy. But it is nice that they've separated the two out so you can fully understand the impacts here. One final look from the Arizona at the view at the rest of the harbor at the Arizona submerged beneath us. Get a better understanding of the area in which Pearl Harbor is and where it took place and the size of this monument around us. Not a whole lot comes to mind to say in order to really encapture what's happened here, but again, I'm glad we're getting a chance to see it. Now making our way off the Arizona Memorial, back to Pearl Harbor, back to the main island so that we can check out those museums and see a bit more of Pearl Harbor here today. After stepping off the vessel behind us with that beautiful view of the harbor and being able to pay our respects on the Arizona, we have this walk of remembrance on our left. I think we may come back for the walk of remembrance because everyone who just got off my vessel is doing the walk of remembrance as well. There's a map here in front of us showing us more of the island of Pearl Harbor so that we can get a visualization of what that looks like. And it looks like it may be in Braille. I'm not quite sure. Looks like it, but I'm, for health purposes, going to keep my hands off of this particular item because I don't feel like I need it. But it does seem like it's a Braille map showing us where to go in case we need that. So let's continue to walk around Pearl Harbor and then come back for a quick look at the Walk of Remembrance in a moment. In the meantime, just looking at more of Pearl Harbor. While we're waiting to do that Walk of Remembrance, a look at the Road to War, one of these museums. You can see a lot of information about the museum here. Some faces you might remember if you'd been in Oahu at the time. Really interesting to see. This gives us a bit of history, it sounds like, of Japan and the expansion of Asia during the time and perhaps what led up to the event, World War I and its legacy, as well as some of the troubled times that led up to Pearl Harbor. Giving you a quick look, and I'll read through these and then share my thoughts on those with you if I have any additional details to add in there. This second page here speaks to World War I and its legacy, including the concerns of the Second World War if actions weren't taken to prevent it talking about this League of Nations to prevent wars and how Germany and Russia were excluded and the United States refused to join. And of course, the events leading up to World War II on this last page. Looking at this map, we see the expansion of Japanese control from 1933 to 1941. They took from all of this area, Korea, up through Manchuria and even Beijing, it looks like, and Shanghai into that French Indochina. Wow. Looking back on these historical events, really heavy feeling. We're so fortunate that we are here, quite honestly, and that the U.S. came out the way it did, but 
really a hard time, a hard series of events that led up to the World War, quite honestly, during this time. And it sounds like the Great Depression was a big piece of that, leading up to that event, so most definitely worrisome considering the impacts of that financial situation on the military and political situation. Also interesting to read about the U.S. being officially neutral in trying to determine whether or not they wanted to intervene as we looked at territorial holdings in 1941. It sounds as if Pearl Harbor was really the big turning event to determine if the U.S. would get involved, at least so far. That's the way it seems. Really interesting, again, to look around to learn about all of the events that transpired that led up to this event. Reading this, too, it says, A Japanese attack on Hawaii is regarded as the most unlikely thing in the world. Makes me think of a quote talking about danger being what people think they know that just ain't so. It seems like they believed they could hold off an attack in that area. And of course, it was most definitely unexpected at the time. They even moved their fleet to Hawaii from the west coast of the United States in an effort to deter Japanese aggression, but it seems as if potentially that may have done the opposite. It sounds like on Oahu they were prepared for and expecting an army or navy attack, but not an attack by air, which may have also led to some of the challenges in reacting to the Pearl Harbor attack. I'm going to skip around a bit in order to be able to show you what's open, and then we'll loop back around. Here's a vessel that depicts a Japanese aircraft carrier, Akagi, it looks like. It sounds as if these ships were used to launch the vessels, the aircraft, which caused the damage on Pearl Harbor. We also have these visualizations of these rockets that were launched. A lot of information regarding the destruction and how the aerial torpedo attack worked. You can see there was the straightforward view and then the torpedoes that seemed like they went from beneath the water. I believe that's what we're looking at here, whereas those rockets may be more dropped from above. This map behind us also shows where it was attacked. Seems like there was a lot of different regions attacked, which we heard about on the Arizona in addition to Pearl Harbor, but Pearl Harbor I think was the big turning point and it was such damage at such scale which really led up to the U.S. responding, it sounds like. It seems as if a seaman sent his family a picture of his lookout station on Pearl Harbor on the Arizona and they received it after the attack. Really sad to think about. I like how they've diagrammed it here for us so we can get a good visualization of the size of that ship. They speak to it in the letter as well, but Nice to see a visual representation here too, with that sailor way off in that little corner on the front left. Or one up here, looks like maybe a captain. Here's another visualization of the battleship Arizona. And we have a video playing here telling us more about the event, how it turned out, how it played out, what was expected, what happened. And this is very interesting as well, looking at the military strength in the Pacific on December 7th, 1941. This is the US on the right, and this is Japan, it looks like they were significantly more prepared in a way. It almost looks like they have a lot more capacity than we did at the time, but also reading some of these documents makes it seem that they most definitely snuck up upon us during that time. Really interesting to read about the last efforts for peace on the morning of December 7th, 1941. Some of the requests of the U.S. versus those of Japan. U.S. requesting that they sever their ties with Germany and Italy and that they remove their troops from China on the Japan side, and Japan saying they will remove forces from Indochina if the U.S. ends their support of China and ends the sanctions economically. And it seems like those economic constraints also led to the violence here. One last detail that's really interesting to read and seems like it was a fairly smart perspective. In the first six to twelve months of the war with the United States and Great Britain, I will run wild and win victory upon victory. But then, if the war continues after that, I have no expectation of success from a Japanese commander-in-chief. Sounds like it was not that far off, and this is Admiral Yamamoto, sounds like, who made that statement. Understood the strategic importance of naval aviation. Most definitely created some challenges in the U.S., but I'm not sure we'd be where we are today if that event hadn't occurred and the U.S. hadn't gotten involved in the war to defend both our country and those other countries that were being attacked at the time. Really interesting to hear from some of these Japanese civilians as well, in terms of how they had to change their school uniforms because they were made in the U.S., some of the damages and the impact to Japan at the time in response to Pearl Harbor, and more. 
now making our way into the next leg, the other half of the museum, or perhaps the second museum, depending upon how you want to look at it. Really nice to be able to see this information out here and get a better understanding of what took place, not just at Pearl Harbor, but during that Second World War, and even what led up to the Second World War here in the United States and in other countries. It seems like this is the attack pavilion, so perhaps this will give us a clearer picture of what exactly happened during the attack. So we read here, Tora, 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 was the Japanese code word that the surprise was complete. The Americans were completely not expecting the air raid, and they thought the low-flying planes was a training exercise. Here's a look at one of these Japanese torpedo bombers that attacked in Pearl Harbor in 1941. And a graphic on the wall, really strong visual depiction of that attack. And can you imagine, it almost seems as if that's the first rocket flying in where no one was expecting it on the ground. Interesting to see, looking at this part of the museum, the relationship between the University of Arizona and the USS Arizona. For example, you have this USS Arizona Pearl Harbor survivor talking with this ROTC member from the University of Arizona. And this picture explaining that most of those who were on the Arizona, like college students, were under 22 years old. It seems like the UA Mall is also a living memorial of the USS Arizona. Interesting to see the ties and the connection between the two. This is very interesting to read about as well. The U.S.'s first shot in the Pacific War when the USS Ward fires upon a midget submarine that was trying to enter Pearl Harbor. And this is the destroyer ward here and the midget submarine beneath it. It seems like the submarine attack was a second line of attack, a double insurance from the Japanese trying to prevent any ships from escaping Pearl Harbor and Oahu. And five tried to slip into the harbor to launch torpedoes. Only one got in and none sank a ship. So it seems like all the damage came from the air on this particular case. It also seems that at the time, radar became a much more popular technology. It was brand new and many officers didn't know how to use it. Only a few senior officers, but it seems like it was used to start to help to identify the attack on Pearl Harbor at that time. There's so much to see in here. This talks about the attack on the Shaw, some of the returning firepower, and what the battleship row looked like during this time. But it sounds like there's some information here as well on the attempted rescues, trying to protect those, save those who were in the attack, to try to minimize that impact in the U.S. Here are some of the honors given to those who were involved in Pearl Harbor. You have Purple Hearts and other Navy crosses and honors given to people in Pearl Harbor. I like this quote behind us. Those who have long enjoyed such privileges as we enjoy forget in time that men have died to win them from President Franklin Roosevelt, 1941. There's so much to see here, but I wanted to at least give you a brief look at some of what it looks like here in the museums, the exhibits at Pearl Harbor. Hopefully you're able to appreciate, honor the event and the day here in looking through these museums and seeing some of the Arizona today. This part of the exhibit talks about the Japanese Americans, some of the challenges that they faced being in the military, being reassigned, and having quite unpleasant duties, yet continuing to do what they can to honor their families and their country and winning Purple Hearts. Really nice to see this memorabilia here and considering how it's easy to lose track of the fact that not everyone who looks similar has the same feelings towards the country or towards others. This is the speech, it seems like, by Franklin Roosevelt. How he rewrote his speech, added in different changes, a date which will live in infamy. He changed in world history to in infamy. Really interesting to see how they rewrote the speech for the president as he spoke to declaring war on Japan. One of the last pieces of this exhibit, here is the USS Arizona Memorial. You can see what the ship looks like under the water. We had the opportunity to see some pillars, such as that one, and where the Arizona is docked in the water. That being said, most of this ship was submerged and we were unable to see it. Here's another visualization with this smaller steel icon on the side. As much as it may be sad and challenging, and emotionally weighted to look through these museums. It's really nice to be able to understand what happened, to have a better picture of the history of our country, what led to some of these wars, and makes me really appreciate being in this country, having the opportunity 
to do everything we can, like create vlogs and share those with you based on the freedoms we still have today. With the weight of the museums, I almost forgot this walk of remembrance. I've been in those museums for a good long while, maybe a good chunk over an hour. I want to take a look along this walk and see what sort of signage, what sort of information is spread throughout this walking path. Also to remember Pearl Harbor. It seems there's a few stone structures and memorials here in this Walk of Remembrance. And I see that ship coming in from the Arizona, which I'm sure will lead people to this Walk of Remembrance as well. So try to get started, move through this one rapidly. So I'm not behind that crowd. Let's take a look. Interesting to read how the structure sags in the center but stands strong on the ends, expresses initial defeat and ultimate victory. The overall effect of serenity. Documentation in reference to honoring the Arizona right on this Walk of Remembrance. In this circle piece of the memorial of the Walk of Remembrance, you have a quote from Roosevelt, December 9th, saying, we are now in this war. We are all in it, all the way. The most tremendous undertaking of our American history. You have a variety of quotes from different individuals who were involved. Here's a quote saying, why them and not me, from an ensign on the Oklahoma, and many others who were here at Pearl Harbor during that attack, talking about the acts of heroism, getting a better understanding of their thoughts, their views on what took place that day. It's important to remember that American spirit that stood strong. That was one thing that I kept hearing as a recurring theme. The Japanese didn't expect Americans to continue to have the will to fight in this war after some of these attacks. It seems like quite the opposite occurred. It seems like Japan needed the oil reserves and other resources, and they attacked Oahu to prevent America from interfering on the day. Here are some more quotes and blurbs about the event. Few islanders went to bed that night. Outdoors there was silence. There was a lunar rainbow. The Hawaiian omen for victory arched over a dark sky. And a lot more information about the vessel's presence. And it seems like this may show us the damage involved sunk heavy and moderate damage. Wow, okay, so the red ones were sunk. Oklahoma, Oglala, Arizona, California, and many others there were sunk, in addition to some heavy and moderate damage. Here's the map of Pearl Harbor, the morning of the Japanese attack. It does seem like there's quite a few ships throughout the water, all docked in this space. They had facilities for refueling, repairing, maintaining ships, and it seems like there are perhaps more, or is this the same list? It seems like maybe this is the same list of the vessels present that day. Before the storm on Oahu, war seemed like a distant threat. December 6 was a balmy night, there were heat flashes, and it seems like a commander made a prophetic remark, just like the calm before the storm. And more of these sorts of quotes and sayings as we walk our way along this walk of remembrance, the first wave and second wave showing us the dive bombers, the timing, 7.47 a.m. it seems. Japanese torpedo bombers here and dive bombers over all of these vessels. And again, it seems like this one, second wave, at 8.54 a.m. you've got the 9 a.m. and the 9.05 strikes on the Tennessee and the Nevada here. And we are here. It gives us a visualization of exactly where we stand on this attack that happened about 80 years ago. There's a few other signs on honoring the dead, the Purple Hearts involved, some of the casualties and what those look like. And, of course, the quote I will never forget here by one of the members of the USS Kiyosankwa. Again, a heavy weighted experience here at Pearl Harbor, but an opportunity to remember some U.S. history and what may have changed the course for not just our country, but for the world. This was the moment we got involved in the war, and it may have been the moment that we needed to act before it was too late. And a lot more information about Pearl Harbor it looks like some of the first casualties. Here we have a key for those ranks and ratings so you can understand whenever you see these initials, these acronyms next to someone's name, what their ranks and ratings were in the military. You have everything from the Army to the Air Force and of course the Marine Corps and the Navy ahead. In addition to this sculpture of Oahu in the middle, you can see where Pearl Harbor sits right in the middle around this Ford Island area. And the whole island, like closer to where we're staying, you can see Diamond Head, you can see Cocoa Head, and the North Shore, perhaps, which we can make happen at some point today. And for another day, perhaps another trip to Oahu in the future, the shuttle taking us to the Missouri, the Oklahoma, down that direction. 
a few more signs here talking about the lasting legacy and the history of Pearl Harbor. I'm glad we had a chance to take a look at that first look, first tour, stepping foot in Pearl Harbor here today. Now I'm planning to go get some food if I can get the chance and then make my way onward from the Pearl Harbor Memorial. There is more to see here, like the bowfin, but I think I've seen a good amount here today and feel like it might be nice to share some of North Shore with you as well. Who knows, maybe I'll come back another day and see more of it, but I feel like this was a pretty good way to experience it for the first time at Pearl Harbor. Thanks so much for being a part of this adventure with me today. Remember to try to bring that silver lining, that outline, those positive vibes to everything you do. Again, really thinking on how fortunate I feel to be here in this country, to be able to be free and do what I want to do, like create videos for you. And this is a piece of history that allowed that to happen. Don't forget to make your day an amazing one as well. Keep those positive vibes going. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed of future adventures. Until next time, play on.